In this video we will talk about hemolytic uremic syndrome also abbreviated HUS. Hemolytic uremic syndrome is a uh, type of uh, anemia that can occur mostly in children and it can also uh, lead to a low platelet count and sometimes it can lead to nephropathy so it's very serious and uh, ninety percent of the time it happens in children less than age five years so it's a pediatric uh, diagnosis really most of the time and the cause is basically contaminated food contaminated food is a common uh, reason for many uh, illnesses but this is one of them and really uh, what we're talking about is uh, E. coli and sometimes also Shigella and what happens is these um, organisms secrete uh, these toxins uh, there is virotoxins are also known as shiga toxins and these toxins are really what uh, cause all the damage uh, so contaminated food and water uh, food and water actually uh, really where these bugs live it's very important to avoid these we'll talk a little bit about prevention a little later so what happens why are these toxins uh, so uh, damaging well what these toxins do is they go and bind to the kidney the glomerulus glomerular endothelial they bind to the endothelial cells in the kidney and that causes cell damage and can eventually lead to the breakdown of the red blood cells this leads uh, to anemia and this process can also result in the destruction of platelets and in renal insufficiency now we'll talk a little bit more about the diagnosis and how you can actually tell that this is actually happening but first let's uh, just go through this uh, step by step um, starting with the history so a child comes in let's say the child is two years old and the child the parents tell you you know that he's possibly eaten some you know contaminated food and there's a long list uh, beef um, I should put the word in contaminated because that's really what's causing this beef or cheese or poultry chicken fed even vegetables um, and then maybe you know drank some water that was not clean and then uh, what are the symptoms so these are this is a little bit about the history but then what are the symptoms well these are the symptoms abdominal pain okay a lot of these are very vague could be anything but kinda helps to narrow it down this one here is a big one anytime you have blood in the in the diarrhea that's always a problem bloody diarrhea is always uh, a huge problem nausea and vomiting okay nausea and vomiting interestingly absence of fever absence of fever is kind of uh, an important part of uh, the, the symptoms so these are these are some of the symptoms and then of course we're talking about the pediatric population so this is part of the age I guess well this is your symptoms and history what do you do how do you how do you proceed at this point well this is the diagnostic process some of the basic tests that you would order CBC and as you know this has the hemoglobin hematocrit and the platelet count okay you would probably order uh, the whole comprehensive metabolic panel but what you're really looking for is the kidney function creatinine BUN another thing you want to probably order is a peripheral smear peripheral smear and this will show you and I'll show you exactly what this will show you it will show you this now remember we talked a little bit before about how these shiga toxins essentially cause fragmentation uh, of the uh, red blood cells fragmentation of RBCs and when that happens the fragmented parts are called there's a special name schistocytes and these arrows on this uh, this is a peripheral smear this right here this is a peripheral smear 
and uh, I've seen this on licensing exams. And this peripheral smear is of a patient with HUS, okay? And this is the anemia. And these arrows here are pointing to the schistocytes. As you can see, these are fragments of red blood cells directly caused by the shiga toxin. So that this is a nice uh, picture of a peripheral smear. Uh, going back to the diagnosis, so you've got these main things. There's a couple other tests, um, you know, that are involved in um, the evaluation of hemolysis. Uh, probably have heard of these. And then what you would also want to do is do a stool culture. Remember the pa the patient will have bloody diarrhea so you want to do a stool culture to try to see if you can isolate the organism uh, that's causing uh, this problem. Now we'll talk a little bit about the treatment. How do you treat HUS, hemolytic uremic syndrome? Well there's a few things. The first thing is you need good hydration anytime somebody has diarrhea they're going to lose a lot of fluids so you need to give them IV fluids okay one thing I wanted to mention um, before we even get into this is you really need to get some specialists involved and those specialists are a hematologist and a nephrologist now this is a big problem in third world countries uh, because uh, you know, as you can imagine, this type of uh, illness occurs a lot in third world countries where you have a lot of contaminated water and food. But unfortunately, third world countries are very difficult to find a specialist, and sometimes even difficult to find a general doctor. So a huge, huge issue here. Going back to the treatment, hydration is very important. Um, the next thing that you need to do is you need to monitor their blood pressure because as you're hydrating the patient, their intravascular volume will increase but because their kidneys are affected they may not be able to um, urinate properly they may develop uh, oliguria so as a result the blood pressure might rise so that needs to be monitored and if it is indeed affected then calcium channel blockers are used So that's a little bit about the hydration, fluid status, and blood pressure. Now the big, the big one, really, the big thing that saves a person's life in HUS is red blood cell transfusion. That's how you basically save a person's life. And without this, the patient will die, plain and simple. And uh, approximately 50% of the time, um, the patient might require uh, acute dialysis because their kidney just isn't working properly. Now we talked about the treatment, let's talk about what you need to avoid. A lot of common mistakes. Avoid these things. Do not, do not give. Do not give antibiotics. Interesting. Interesting, I think. Do not give anti-motility agents to stop that diarrhea. Motility agents, anti-diarrheal agents. Do not give those. All right. And finally, I, I want to talk a little bit about prevention. Prevention, you know, uh, especially in third world countries or anywhere really, it doesn't have to be just third world countries. It could be in North America as well. Is really you have to have sanitary measures when it comes to food. Sanitary measures are important. You have to make sure you cook the food properly. You have to make sure that you avoid uh, unpasteurized milk. Uh, you have to wash your hands. That's really the, it sounds like a simple thing, but it really prevents a lot of these uh, food-related, water-related uh, illnesses. Uh, just as a closing statement, uh, this is a, diagnosis that has personal relevance to me because I had this when I was a child. I was approximately two years old and I had hemolytic uremic syndrome and I almost died. I uh, pretty much had uh, 48 hours to live and the only thing that saved my life was right here. This is what did it and I'm obviously around today because of this. So I hope you uh, 
enjoyed this presentation about hemolytic uremic syndrome.